fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hey! And here's news for all you mothers listening. The sparkle of lovely silverware sure sets off a table, doesn't it? And now you can own a complete set of exquisite Queen Bess pattern silverware for practically a song. All you need are the silverware coupons that come with packages of nourishing Cheerios, plus the small cost to cover mailing and handling. Imagine such an easy way to get gorgeous silverware with a charming floral wreath design. You're offered many extras, too. Iced teaspoons, dessert servers, even seafood forks. And this is a long-lasting silverware. Extra heavily plated. So fine in quality and appearance, it's perfectly at home in the most expensive table settings. So save those valuable silverware coupons in packages of Cheerios. Start making the most of them now. Enjoy really beautiful silverware. Just as your whole family enjoys Cheerios for breakfast. That's Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that helps give you the strength and energy you need. Dan Reed, nephew of the Lone Ranger, arrived at Pikeville by stage to spend his summer vacation with the masked man and his Indian companion. Tonto met Dan at the stage stop. Then they rode to a nearby grove where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Dan, I can't tell you how glad I am to see you. You can't be any happier than I am, sir. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Dan, beginning to look like you, Kimasabi. I'm almost tall as you now. He has gone a great deal, Tonto. Dan, I look forward to the day when your vacation would permit you to come back to us for the summer. So have I, sir. What's in that package? Oh, something I've kept for a long time, Dan. Old Peter, their silver mine, took care of it for me. Tonto and I went for it not long ago. Hey, open the package. All right. I wonder what it is, Tato. Huh, huh. Maybe you open the package. I'll find out quick. Good idea. Oh, a silver studded gun belt. Oh, golly, my boy. A silver studded gun belt and a pearl handled gun. <laughs> Dan's voice changing, Kimisabi. Yes, Tato. <laughs> the gun and belt, they belong to my brother, your father, Dan. I've decided to try you out and let you wear a gun for a while to see how you handle it. I'm not giving it to you yet. Oh, I understand, sir. Remember, you carry a gun only for protection. You must promise never to shoot to kill. I promise, sir. I want to put it on. How do I look, Tonto? Oh, like real man. It looks plenty good. <laughs> if you wear masks, you look almost like Lone Ranger. Uh, you're not as tall as Lone Ranger, but maybe people think you're Lone Ranger if they're not see you together. Someday Dan, too, may wear a mask to help the law in the West Tunnel. Uh, Kimisabi, you have extra mask and saddlebag. Let uh, me get it. See how Dan looks. Uh, here are the mask, Dan. Now, uh, you put them on. All right. There. Ah, uh, me right. You look like Lone Ranger. There is a great similarity at that. I didn't realize it. All right, take off the mask now, Dan, and we'll go back to our camp in the hills. Dan removed the extra mask and put it into his pocket. Then the two men and the youth mounted and left the grove. Easy, said the big fellow. Anyway, Get up, Victor! It was about noontime when the Lone Ranger, Dan, and Toto reached their camp in the hills outside of Pikeville. After having lunch, the masked man said, 
Then, there's an outlaw gang led by a man named Juan Marco, a Spaniard operating in this territory. I heard the stage driver mention Marco, sir. Said he'd been held up and robbed a month ago by the Marco gang. Uh, we hear it, stage holder. Juan Marco is clever. Tonto and I attempted to capture him once before in New Mexico. He gave us the slip. Uh, that right. Uh, we searched the foothills for Marco's hideout, Then You ride to town and get some supplies. We don't have enough for the three of us. All right, sir. When you get back to camp, get some rest. You need it after your trip. I don't know. I'll be back by sundown. In a small, respectable-looking farmhouse belonging to one of his friends, Juan Marco spoke to four rough-looking men. So far, amigos, we have managed to evade the law. But from now on, we must be most careful. Why, Juan? You've been smart enough to keep us away from the law up to now? See, that is so, Max. But slickers tell me that two certain hombres are snooping around here. A masked man and an Indian. That's right, Max. I saw him on the valley trail the other day while I was riding along the ridge. The masked man is known as the Lone Ranger. He rides a big white stallion and has an Indian companion who rides a paint. They have helped to put many outlaw gangs behind the bars. Oh, Look, maybe I'm new in this territory... But in Colorado, where I come from, we don't admit being afraid of anybody. Let's say we are just being cautious, amigo. I cased the Pikeville Bank and found out it's loaded. I thought we planned to grab all that cash soon. My opinion is that we should lay low until the masked man and his Indian friend leave here, Max. Well, I don't agree with you. I say let's go out and search for them. Let's round up that masked man and make sure he can't interfere with our plans. I'm willing to take a chance and go after him. Why don't the rest of you prove you have as much nerve as I have? Well, maybe Max is right, Juan. I'd be willing to try. No. We shall see what the rest are willing to do. How about it, senores? Do you want to take the bull by the horn so as to speak and go after the masked man and Indian? I know. Sure, I'll go. All right. I have a badge I took from a sheriff once after he was shot by the gang I was with. Yeah. Here it is. And what do you expect to do with that, senor? Wear it. There. Now I'm a sheriff. But I do not see how that is to help. I'll try the friendly approach, Juan. If the masked man was seen riding the valley trail, I'd say he'll pass along there again, coming back to his camp, which must be nearby. I'll watch for him. Then ride up to him and ask his help to round up a killer I'll say I've been trailing. We're still listening. Look, I'll tell him I've heard all about him. He'll agree to help me, of course. Then I'll bring him here, saying I think the killer is hiding out here. But what about the Indian... Yeah, I forgot him. Well, if he's along, I'll ask him to help, too. There's five of us. They won't be expecting me to pull a gun on them from behind while you men face them as they come in here. Hey, it might work at that. I'll start out right away and watch the valley trail from the ridge. Slick, you follow me at a distance and watch to see if anything happens. If I do meet the masked man, you hurry back here and warn the others. Well, Max, I hope your plan succeeds. But I... Don't worry, Juan. Sooner or later, we'll have those hombres right here facing our guns. Dan Reed waited a while before leaving camp for town. Then he mounted his white horse victory and started along the valley trail at a leisurely pace. Come on, Victor. After he had gone some distance, he felt in his pocket to make certain he had the supply list. His hand came in contact with a mask Tonto had given him to try on at camp. Oh, I forgot to return this mask. Oh, ho, Victor, ho, steady, boy. For a moment, Dan held the mask in his hand. Then something the Lone Ranger had said ran through his mind. Someday, Dan, too, may wear a mask to help the law in the West, Tonto. Gosh, I wonder what that would be like. I'll put on this mask now and try imitating the Lone Ranger. Nobody will see me. There, Victor. Now we'll go after outlaws. Come on, Victor! For a few moments, Dan thrilled in pretending he was the Lone Ranger, and he urged Victor onward at a rapid pace. continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. 
Diving Doris is 13, and she is the diving queen. She can do a flip because she knows she's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, she's got go power. There she goes. Oh. She's feeling her Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Good old Cheerios, they got go. So nourishing because they're made from oats with minerals, vitamins, and proteins that your body needs. Yes, indeed. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day off right. Does all sorts of good things for your body. Helps you have strong bones and muscles, good red blood, and healthy nerves. So every morning, take on a bowl of Cheerios and milk for real go power. You like that wonderful toasted oat flavor, too. Downright delicious. Come to think of it, Cheerios is one of the tastiest muscle-building foods you can eat. Try Cheerios and you'll hear... She's feeling her Cheerios. to continue. A short time later, Dan's attention was attracted by a horseman racing down the slope to intercept him. Momentarily forgetting the mask he was wearing, the youth pulled Victor to a halt. Oh, oh, Victor, hold on, hold on. Maybe I'd better get off. Hey, I want to talk to you. He seems friendly enough. Oh, 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 oh. Howdy, mister. I reckon you noticed my sheriff's badge. I'm from up Colorado way. I've heard about you and Seeing that mask and the white stallion. Mask? Oh, oh, oh that one. No, no need to explain. Like I said, I've heard about you plenty. I want your help. Help? Listen, Sheriff, about the mask I... I know to... you're the Lone Ranger, so say no more about it. I trail an outlaw down this way. I think he's holed up in a nearby farmhouse. Sheriff, I'm not the man you want. You see, I'm wearing this mask as sort of... Rage and freeze. All right. But I think you're making... <laughs> Marco and the others must be loco to be afraid of an hombre like you. Now take that gun. <laughs> Man alive, I wish they could see this. You know, somehow, mister, you got everybody fooled. But you must know your match when you meet him. <laughs> I'm taking you to see Marco and the gang. I'll laugh in their faces, and then I'll put a bullet in your back. I get moving. Come on, Victor. Get him. Come on. <laughs> Rick reported to Marco that he had seen Max capture the masked man. When Dan and Max arrived at the farmhouse, they stopped at the back door. Oh, oh, Victor, oh, steady, boy. Walk around the house. We'll go in the front door. Remember, no tricks. Now, boom. Open the door. Don't forget the gun at your back. Here he is, men. He acted so meek when I met him, I decided to ditch the friendly act and get tough. <laughs> One, this hombre sure had you and plenty of others fooled. Keep him covered, man. Yeah, right, man. So, you have disarmed the masked man alone, eh, Senor Max? I sure did. Easy as could be. Where is his horse? The white stallion is behind the house. Oh, this is most strange. I do not like it. What's strange about it? Once this hombre faced a gang single-handed and got the best of them. I know. I stood right beside him. Just as I stand now. Uh, wait. Caramba. There is something wrong here. Yeah, what do you mean? Yeah, Juan, what's come over you? When I stood beside the Lone Ranger before, senores, he was taller than I. And broader in the shoulders. You must have imagined it. He's a good two inches shorter than you, Juan, and not so solid. I'm not the Lone Ranger. Hey, I tried to tell you about this, Max. That boy, that boy, senor Max, what is this? He cannot be the Lone Ranger. I'll never forget his voice. I'll remove that mask. There, look. The face of a youth. Five years ago, I first saw the masked hombre. This one would have been a mere boy then. Why, sure. He was masked. He was riding a white stallion. I was just trying to imitate the Lone Ranger when I met you. I started to tell you, but you made me keep quiet. Then, do you mean to say this isn't the hombre I was supposed to bring here? <laughs> That's exactly it, Senor Max. The brave, tough outlaw from Colorado got the drop on a play-acting youth and brought him here to strut in front of us. See, he has no belt of silver bullets either. You're a fool, Max. Yeah. Oh, I'm a fool, am I? I'll fix this maverick for pulling this trick on me. I'll not take that gun or no gun! Boy, I'll kill you for that. Wait, wait, Max, wait. Let him alone. You brought that on yourself. At least the young fellow has courage. 
What is your name, amigo? Dan Reed. So you admire this masked man known as the Lone Ranger, eh? You wish to imitate him, no? Yes, I admire him. I had the mask. Never so mind. I... It was enough to fool Senor Max here. And most anyone else who might have seen you. We better get rid of him and make other plans. Oh, wait. I, I have the great idea. What is it? Yeah, tell us about it, Juan. We'll go rob the Pikeville Bank tonight and take this fellow Dan with us. He'll wear the mask and ride the white stallion. We'll make sure he's seen. After tonight, the Lone Ranger will no longer be respected. He will be thought of as an outlaw. Uh, tie this fellow till we're ready to go. Late that afternoon, a heavy rainstorm erased any tracks Dan's horse made, so that when the Lone Ranger and Toto returned to the camp just before sundown, and Dan wasn't there, they were unable to trail him. They rode to town to inquire, but learning Dan hadn't bought supplies, they decided to go back and search the trail. A bright moon arose, and the masked man and Indian could see some distance along the trail. They found no sign of Dan or his horse. Finally, the Lone Ranger spoke. I don't know, let's turn to that gully alongside the trail and search it. Dan might be lying there, hurt or wounded. Well, that's good idea, Kimisabe. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. As the two men rode slowly along the bottom of the gully, they heard the sound of hooves approaching out on the trail. Who's it? Who's it? Several horsemen moving toward town, Toto. Mm, then soon pass here. We wait. Well, then plan to rob bank in town. Have someone pose as Lone Ranger. Toto. Dan may be riding with him. Dan? Yes, remember he put on one of my masks. He must have had it with him. Oh, so one of the horses whinnied as they passed. It sounded like Victor's whinny. Uh, me think you're right, Kim Sabi. We'll take a shortcut to town and contact the sheriff. Come on, Get him out! Oh. Marco and his men stopped among the trees on the edge of town to perfect their plans. Then they circled so as to come up behind the Pikeville Bank. They dismounted in a nearby oh, grove. Oh, 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 oh. Senor Dan, I have taken the bullets from you. Now I give back your gun unloaded. The lone ranger would not ride with an empty holster. Here. Thanks. You'll be covered every minute, Dan. And get shot if you don't play along. See, that is right. Have your guns ready, senores. All right, Dan. I will go. Force the back window, then unlock the back door from the inside. You, Schlick, will hold a gun on this mask all day till we come out. Stand with him just outside the back doorway. All right. Now let's go. This window will be easy to force. Catch is rusted. Noticed him when I case the bank. I'm going to work on it. Funny dark inside. I'll go through and unlock the door. Watch the young fellow closely, Slick. Don't worry. Follow me, senor. Dan Reed stood waiting while Slick held a gun at his back. He had an impulse to shout for help, but knew it would be useless. He saw the light go on inside. Then, through the open door, he saw several men rise up behind the teller's long counter. Hey! Holy mackerel, we gotta get away from here! Run for the horse. No, we'll stay here. What? Dan suddenly grabbed Slick's gun arm. Quick was surprised by Dan's vice-like grip. Let go of my arm. I'll fix you. As Slick struggled to use his gun on Dan. Dan ducked. Slick. Then drawing his empty gun, brought the body aim down heavily on Slick's head. Oh. That'll stop you. Dan, you all right? Yes, sir. Take off that mask and tie this man. Then go away with the horses. Yes, sir. I'm going in to help the sheriff and his men. Inside, the crooks were taken by surprise. Two were wounded, but Max and Marco found protection alongside the big safe. Senor Max, fire the lamp. They will try to get through the back door. Stop those guns. Hey, look. The masked young fella. 
His gun is empty. I'll plug him. Hold it. No, I'm hit. Oh, Karama, we've been trapped. I give up. I know you're really the little ranger. I dropped my gun. They have the wall, Sheriff. Keep them covered. Four of them. Three of them wounded. There's another one outside the door. He's tied. Good. That man is Juan Marco, leader of the gang. Marco, eh? He's caused a lot of trouble around here. Uh, Kimisabi, you'll find Dan? Yes, he's all right, Toto. He's waiting with the horses. He knocked out one of the crooks. Oh, uh, that's good. <laughs> Dan, growing up fast. Juan, the young fellow with the mask. I thought he was the one who came in. So oh, now you believe what I said, eh, Senor Max? You're not so tough as you thought. Neither are you, Marco. Once the masked man got in your trail, you didn't have a chance. Juan, that masked youngster got us into this mess. He hadn't fooled me into thinking he was the real masked man you talked about. Take a good look at the masked man. Then you'll see the... No, oh, he and the Indian have already left, eh? Yeah, they don't waste time after a job is finished. I don't know what your pal's talking about, but as far as I'm concerned, nobody but a dimwit could ever mistake anybody for the Lone Ranger. Turn in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure, Dan Reed's Fight for Life. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. It's good to know you can make something out of yourself, and you can, because champions are made, not born. Take the story of Jack Kramer, tennis star. When Jack was just 11 years, his tennis didn't win him cheers. But practice built his power game, and he got on his way to fame with Wheaties, the food the champs acclaim. Today, Jack tops the tennis clan for 22 years a Wheaties man. Jack Kramer, going steady on Wheaties since he was 11 years old. Mighty good for you. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Okay, Jack, serve that ball. On his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Dan Reed had disappeared and the Lone Ranger and Toto searched for a gang's hideout in the nearby hills where they suspected he might have been taken by outlaws. But storms interfered with the search, and Dan was forced to fight for his life against great odds. This is a story of suspense and action you'll not want to miss. Be sure to listen. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. The Lone Ranger is brought to you by General Mills every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen.